Hello? OK. So hello, open stackers. Thank you for coming. We, it's the last session of Wednesday, and we have hours full. Uh, this is great. I'll try to make sure all of you find something useful out of this session. Uh, my name is Fawad Khalik, and uh, I'm an engineer at PlumGrid. And today we're going to talk about Docker networking in OpenStack. So by the way, this session is not going to be about what uh, Docker or container technology is. We'll focus on its networking aspects. Because at PlumGrid, a lot of people have come and asked us about how to manage this explosion around Docker containers. And there is specifically a lot of confusion around its networking aspects. So with that, a brief introduction about myself. I've been uh, a member of the OpenStack community for some time now. I'm also a developer uh, in the networking group, Neutron. And uh, I'm also the maintainer of uh, PlumGrid Neutron plugin, also known as Networking PlumGrid, starting Kilo. If any of you would like to contact me or get in touch with me, this is where my contact information is. So we are all at OpenStack Summit, and we all love OpenStack. And we would all like Docker to be seen as part of OpenStack. So I've kept my agenda, keeping in mind the statement I just made. So we'll talk about what is Docker, why is it being rapidly adopted. We'll talk about some of the use cases that industry is adopting around Docker containers. We'll talk about what is the state of Docker inside OpenStack, Heat, Magnum, Nova. And we'll also talk about what is the state of Docker networking in general, outside OpenStack, inside OpenStack, what was there when Docker came out? What is it that is there today? What is it that we can do inside Neutron and inside OpenStack? And then we'll, we'll go over how we can unify or have a common homogenous networking for containers and VMs inside OpenStack. And we'll also go over a demonstration of uh, that part. And in the end, we'll, we'll uh, discuss some of the key takeaways. So Docker 101. Uh, before we proceed, a quick show of hands, how many people are using Docker today? Wow, that's a lot of people. Excellent. So just to give you some background over here, containers, and specifically Linux containers, are not new. Um, some, some companies have been using them for years. And uh, now this open source project called Docker has completely redefined the way we look at containers today. So Docker is, offers a common packaging format or a standard API to provision containers in a way that you can run processes in isolation. And uh, as a result, I mean, it's no surprise, it's a huge adoption, just like OpenStack. I mean, if you look at these numbers over here, these are stunning numbers, like 100 million plus Docker engine downloads, 45,000 plus um, applications on Docker Hub, hundreds of community members, excellent stats on uh, GitHub. And this shows that how the industry has already embraced container technology, and specifically uh, Docker in this case. So what's the reason behind it? They're lightweight. So typical containers are very small size, and they boot extremely fast in milliseconds versus virtual machines. And that's why people are using them. You could spin up thousands of containers on a host, and they would offer you easy man uh, management of uh, um, uh, libraries and binaries. If we talk about the use cases of Docker containers, uh, these are ubiquitous use cases. You could swap them one-on-one -on -one with virtual machines. You had bare metal, you have virtual machines, now you have containers. So the use cases over here, are they did not show up out of the blue. They've always been there. So think of containers as you thought of VMs and thought of bare metal at some point from the use kit perspective. And this also goes to the point that the issues that we saw for networking for bare metal and networking for VMs are going to be the same for containers. And that's why we are here. So let's talk about the love of Docker with OpenStack today. Docker is part of OpenStack under some programs. Uh, I'll start with Nova, and then Heat, the orchestration system. And then you have Magnum. And by the way, um, over here, uh, this, is, this is by no means I'm taking, um, I'm saying one is good versus the other. Um, there's specifically for Magnum, uh, there are a lot of design sessions going on. 
please go and contribute. Uh, there's a lot of good work happening over there. And in this session, I'm not going to go into details of heat and magnum. I'll, I'll focus on the Nova Compute part, which is there today. So in Nova Compute, um, we have a Docker driver, uh, which allows you to spin up Docker containers as Nova instances. So Docker has some feature set, and then Nova has some APIs. And the feature set that Docker has is not completely exposed by Nova APIs. And similarly, all the Nova APIs that are there are not supported by Docker. So you see an overlap of that. And the project or the word driver inside, inside Stackforge these days, and there's a discussion going on to bring it back uh, uh, inside OpenStack. It may be part of Magnum. Let's see what happens moving forward. So this is where the fun part comes into the picture. We say Docker technology is awesome. Um, we also must realize that networking for Docker should be awesome as well, right? So when Docker came out, there were some networking options out there. And uh, let's start with the most popular one. How many people sitting over here know what Docker Zero Bridge is? Right? Nice. So Docker Zero Bridge is a Linux bridge, which is like an L2 learning switch built into the kernel. And every container has a static IP address. And your containers can talk to your, or your host can talk to your container over this Linux bridge, or this Docker Zero Bridge. And this Docker proxy with IP tables magic to do some extra stuff. You could also have container to container communication happen over Unix, Unix domain sockets. And uh, this is like a file descriptor based communication, which is restricted to one host. Then uh, you could also do give full host network access to your container. And that would allow your host to talk to your container over the loopback, and your container could have access to or be able to listen on some privileged ports. This, what you're looking at over here, is, is, is in the past. This is very primitive networking. If you take this to any network I, uh, IT admins, um, they, would have, they would not be comfortable with it. And things have changed and improved um, over the past few months. And what we have today is a new feature set or a new framework or a new interfaces to Docker networking, and that is libnetwork. So libnetwork provides you this pluggable framework uh, through which you can provision some, uh, some things like just the way we do Neutron today. So this, what you're looking at over here, is a container network model which libnetwork has introduced. This container network model has uh, three main uh, terminologies. We have a network sandbox and an endpoint, and there's a notion of network. So network sandbox is, is like an isolated environment where networking for a Docker container resides. An endpoint is like a network interface which allows you to communicate over a specific network. And then a network is a group of endpoints which allow you to communicate over all the endpoints inside that group with each other. So libnetwork is a pluggable framework which allows you to have different networking implementations. It has a standard single API, which is agreed upon by all the developers, users, stakeholders of uh, Docker. And this also has a notion of drivers and extensions, uh, which will give you power to plug in one networking implementation versus the other. And in my opinion, things are definitely going into the right direction when we talk about Docker networking. Let's talk a little bit about Neutron as well, the way Neutron does things today. So Neutron has an API and this plugin framework, and you can actually have some plugin in there in this example. Let's say a Neutron plugin, Neutron plugin, and the call goes to plugin, plugin calls the backend, and you're able to provision on-demand networks from Neutron APIs. So I'm pretty sure I've done a great job at confusing you guys at the new terminology coming from libnetwork. So this is an OpenStack crowd. I assume all of us understand what Neutron networking terminology means. So I've, I'll try to do some mapping with what libnetwork is trying to do and what Neutron does today. today. So you have this notion of network, which is an isolated entity, a group of endpoints, which in Neutron today maps to a network as well. So from the current definition, it can be a simple network, it can be a shared network, it can be an external network, uh, it doesn't matter. Then endpoint maps to a port in Neutron. So in port in Neutron is something when you 
let's say, a provision of VM, uh, you would request Neutron to give you a port which has an IP address and a MAC address, and that's where a VM is able to communicate over the network. And for the network sandbox, there's no direct comparison today, and we see, we'll see how the networking evolves moving forward. So the point I'm trying to make over here is that networking has to be and must be unified for containers and VMs. And let's see how that goes moving forward. And why does it have to be unified? Uh, somebody came to me a few months ago. They asked, like, can you do networking for in OpenStack for VMs and containers at the same time? There are all sorts of use cases. So I picked one use case, which is very simple, which is uses Nova, which uses existing Neutron. So all the components that we have today, which work. So you have Nova API, and Nova API can talk to uh, multiple compute nodes, which are of different types. So you have one with the compute type of Docker, the other one with the compute type of libvirt. So one compute node is capable of provisioning containers, the other one is capable of provisioning VMs, and then you have this common networking layer, which is Neutron, to provision networks. So what you have over here is that you provision networks from Neutron, and you are able to connect your containers to containers, containers to VMs, and VMs to containers, and VMs to VMs, and vice versa, and uh, all the permutation combinations that uh, you would want. So the use case that I picked over here, let's say I have uh, some web app or some application servers which I want to run in containers because I want them to, do, to be elastic up and down. And then uh, I have my database server, which I don't trust the security model of containers today, and I want to want them to be protected inside VMs. So that's one use case. And we, we can talk about some of the use cases, um, and there are plenty of those. So how exactly it works uh, when, when I said you have Docker engine running as a compute node and you spawn containers and containers have to be connected to a network which is provisioned from Neutron. Uh, in this model, they are no different than the way we treat VMs right now. They have to have a tap interface which is plugged into a networking implementation. In this case, let's say a call goes to Nova API and the call is that provisional Nova instance, which is of type Docker container, and Nova API calls the compute, compute requests Nova API, uh, Neutron API that this is the network I've been given, can you provision a port for me, and that port is provision, call goes to the backend, let's say in this case PlumGrid uh, plugin, and PlumGrid plugin calls the backend, and then when that is done, it, it goes to the Nova Docker driver, which has a WIF driver, which has to call the backend again to plug that virtual interface, and then container is launched, at that point, container will have connectivity on the network, which is provisioned from Neutron. So in this way, containers are treated no different than VMs when we talk about networking. And this will be true for different type of containers, system containers, application containers. So to the user, they, they should not be do no difference. You should have a single common networking layer to achieve all of this. So the question is, is this even real? Like, does it work? Uh, yes, looks good on the, um, as, as a block diagram, but yes, I think yes. We'll, we'll go over a demonstration of uh, uh, exactly this use case where we have two compute nodes. So what I have over here is I have two physical servers. They're running Kilo dev stack. By the way, congratulations to all of you. Kilo is out, Sable is out, and all the developers and contributors and people who are at Paris Summit uh, in the design sessions. So what we're running over here is Kilo DevStack multi-node deployment with, uh, with Neutron and PlumGrid Neutron plugin. And we have one node running a controller and a compute. The other node is running a compute. Uh, one node is running Nova Docker driver, and the other one is running a Nova libvirt driver. And there are some PlumGrid components running over here. And this stack is capable of giving you multi-hypervisor, container, and VM with single networking across nodes with all the network use cases or capabilities that Neutron offers. So what I'll do in the demo will be, I'll provision a network from Neutron, I'll provision or launch uh, two Nova instances, one is gonna be a Docker, the other one is gonna be a VM, I'll connect both of them to the same Neutron network, these are two on different physical hosts, and then I'll check connectivity between them, and there's some, some um, advanced use cases where you provision a router, connect to a network, 
and then check external connectivity, and then you have floating IPs, uh, and you have security policies to see if uh, the behavior is uh, there. So if we have to um, see how will it look like from a physical to a virtual network point of view, so we have two servers. Server one is running Docker Compute, and server two is running Libvirt Compute. They are connected to each other over a physical network, and one is running a Docker container, and the other one is running a virtual machine, and they are connected to the same virtual network. And they are able to communicate with each other seamlessly. And then they are also capable of communicating with the external world through this router and an ad. That's the cloud that you have there. So with that, I'll, I'll jump over to the demonstration. So what I have over here is uh, Horizon OpenStack dashboard. And I have Plumgrid console. We'll be using these two dashboards to, over, the, uh, over this demo. And Horizon will be used for provisioning, and Plumgrid console will only be used for uh, looking at how the topology looks like uh, over there. So we log in as admin, admin. Let's look at some of the system uh, resources first in this setup. So we have, uh, in the list of hypervisors, we have two hypervisors, Docker type and ChemU in this case. And uh, I'm using host aggregates in this setup, so, so make sure that I can uh, schedule my VMs on the correct availability zone. I have a Docker zone and a Libvirt zone, which are uh, using the relevant uh, hosts or compute nodes. And then in the image list, I have two images, one is a simple Cirrus I put from uh, Docker, and the other one is a Libvirt Cirrus, so that they, uh, they can be provisioned in a way they're compatible with their uh, backend type. And I have one in, 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 in Plumgrid UI. I have two compute nodes. And in this deployment, what I'm looking at over here is one node is over here, and the other one is So with that, let's go over a project that I've created. It's called Docker Networking Demo Project. And in this project, we'll actually provision these networks and containers and VMs and check connectivity. So as a starter, let's look at the network topology that we have. It's empty right now. I just provision an external network, which is uh, part of the deployment. And if you look at it, it's, uh, Visualization in Plumgrid, we have a tenant Docker networking demo, which is empty. Of course, it will have the default security groups. So now let's go and provision a network and a subnet. So let's call this network uh, Docker demo network. And with that, we'll also have a subnet on top of this. Let's get Docker demo subnet. Let's give it IP address 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Make sure uh, DHCP is uh, enabled. So at this point, you should have a network and a subnet with DHCP. And in the network topology, this is what it looks like uh, in, uh, in the OpenStack dashboard. If you go to Plunger dashboard, um, we see uh, its corresponding part, which is a network and a subnet, that's the CP over there, just like a provision in Neutron. So now, let's uh, go over provisioning uh, the Nova side of things. So there are no instances right now running. I have two compute nodes. I'm calling one is Docker Compute, and the other one is a Libvirt Compute, and we should check if I have any Docker containers running at this point. I don't at this point any in the list, and we should also check the worst list over there to see if we have any VMs. None. And now we provision a Docker container and attach it to the network. So in this over here, I'm gonna pick the availability zone, which is gonna be the Docker zone, so that it gets provisioned on the correct uh, compute host. In the image, I'm gonna pick the Cirrus image, which is the 
uh, which is the one which is compatible with Docker. And then I have the default security group, and which is connected to now uh, Docker demo network. And the container should be up pretty quickly. That's active now with IP 192.168.0.2. So if you look at in the Docker compute node, in the list of containers, we have a container which got created 14 seconds ago. And let's compare its UUID with the one which is in Nova. It should start with 3B2EE. Uh, -E. And if you see, we're looking at the, the correct container. And now let's check uh, if this container has the IP address, which is supposed to be assigned from Neutron. Let's pick the container ID. Let's do if config. And it has the IP address 192.168.0.2, which is the same one as the one we see in OpenStack dashboard. So now let's, uh, let's go over and provision a virtual machine using the other availability zone, which is going to use the LiveVirt hypervisor. It's called an EVM1. And in the images, let's pick the LiveVirt Cirrus image. And again, from the networking standpoint, it's going to be the same network. Again, default security group, Docker demo network. And as soon as that comes up, let's, uh, let's check um, if our compute node running LiveVirt has this virtual machine. So watch list. So we have a VM which came up. And let's compare its UUID with the one which is in OpenStack dashboard. And that should start with 30385. And that's correct. We're looking at the same VM. These are two different compute nodes. And now let's see how that looks from uh, the network standpoint. So in the network, network topology diagram, we have the network and two NOVA instances. By the way, NOVA does not distinguish between uh, containers and VMs. However, we see some distinction over here. We have a Docker and a VM, which are connected to uh, the same network here. That's the Docker demo network. And we'll see how the communication will happen over this path. So now let's go and log into uh, the virtual machine, and let's um, look at how we can communicate uh, from VM to Docker and Docker to VM, and also check if our VM got an IP address or not. Let's go to instances. Let's, let's open the console for this guy. Okay. So it has an IP address 192.168.0.3. That should, it's the same one as the one we see in Nova. And now let's ping from this VM on one compute node to a container on the other compute node. And I see ping is going through. It's the same IP address. And let's ping from the container to this VM, which is on the other compute node on the same network. And using state-of-the-art ping utility, we see the packets are going through. OK, so I'm going to stop over here. Um, I have some other things going on as well in the demo. I think I'm going to skip to the end part. Um, so what's going to happen now is that um, in the end, we'll have a full topology with, with the router and uh, NAT and um, floating IPs and security policy. And what's going to happen in the end is we'll see a full networking diagram will be created. If any of you would like to see the full demonstration of this, please come to our booth and we'll be happy to show you that. Right now, I, I want to, I know everybody knows Newton networking and this is standard stuff. So, not, not much extra details there. Okay, so what you're looking at over here is uh, the network topology where you have the same network that you created from Neutron, it has a Docker container attached to it and a VM attached to it. They're able to communicate over to each other over the cell to broadcast domain. And then you have DHCP over there giving the IP addresses to these guys through static leases. And this network 
is connected to a router, and the router is connected to a NAT, and then NAT is uh, there for floating IPs to communicate with the external world. And this maps directly to the topology that you see in Neutron, and that topology should look like look something like uh, this, where you have your uh, network connected to a router and router connected to your external network. With that, I'd like to go back to my presentation. So just, just to give an overcap, uh, 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 overview of, or a recap of what I just did in the demo, I provisioned a network, I provisioned uh, two Nova instances, a Docker container and a VM. I connected them both to the same uh, Neutron network and I was able to communicate between these two across two uh, compute nodes, and then there was some additional functionality where you would see the end topology where you had a router connected to an external network and the router connected to a physical private network, and then uh, communication was happening in a way that um, you could have floating IPs and security policies and et cetera. So what's coming next? This is the important part. I'm pretty sure a lot of us uh, sitting over here were wondering, uh, there are other use cases, and there's Magnum, so I just came out of a Magnum session uh, one and a half hour ago, and we were discussing exactly uh, how we can do networking for that aspect. So there are interesting use cases where you want to run container inside a VM, which is a NOVA VM. You want to do networking for that as well. So what's coming next is that we'll be contributing to uh, Magnum networking design, how that goes. Currently, uh, it's in design phase. It's in, under discussions. So we see how that goes, and Adrian is doing a great job. We'll be collaborating. And then in the end, we'll, we'll provide a common Neutron API, which allows you to connect your containers and your virtual machines in a seamless way that from, uh, from an operator or user point of view, there's absolutely no difference. So we know Docker is awesome, and finally it has arrived inside OpenStack. And we know networking has to work with both. And I just showed you a demo of networking for VMs and Docker works or container works. So please come and visit PlumGrid at booth S14 if you have any other questions. And I have the most important message after that for this session. Uh, networking is the most awesome thing in OpenStack now. So please come and contribute to the great cause and be part of the networking umbrella. Thank you. Questions? So we saw lib networking working. We saw one network on there. We know libvirt implies a hard capped limit on the number of VIFs that can be plugged from a VM into the switching on the compute host. What's the limit on the number of VIFs if, the, if you know of for a Docker container? So I was not using lib network over here. I was okay. using li lib network over here. I was using uh, Nova and Neutron mm -hmm. and the containers which are provisioned from Nova would provision in the exactly the same way as we provision VMs today. So the number of tab devices that you can create for VMs is exactly the same as for containers because this is these are the example that I gave over here is for well it's it's yes. limited by quota is that what you're saying? Quotas or your system limitation or whatever the case. So yeah. Well, libvirt caps you at ten. Sure. If quota is at fifty. But Can I create 50 tap devices of for course, that why container? Not? Why not? Yes. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, thank you. So, Nate, uh, I have a question. So, how did you uh, create this uh, Docker image? Do you have uh, any uh, existing tools to yes. create this? So, the setup was brought up using DevStack. And if you go to uh, GitHub slash StackForge slash Nova dash Docker, uh, they have instructions over there how to modify the local RC and configuration files and any files to actually bring up this stack. And when you bring up this pack stack, you specify what kind of image you want to pull. Uh, it pulls it from Docker registry, and you're able to... Um... Yeah, for the uh, Docker image, do you need to provide additional uh, glance uh, properties to it? So uh, from, from the image point of view, it works exactly the same way as other images are handled. But... Uh, uh, under, under the hood, uh, it needs to have some compatibility with, uh, with the kind of images that Docker supports. So you need to have an image, which is actually a container image. If there's something else, it will error out. So there are good error and checks in Nova Docker driver that if you try to spin up uh, a, a, v, an, a container through an image which is not compatible, it will give you yeah. an error that is not compatible. All right, thank you. 
So for your demo, you used the um, plum grid neutron driver? Yes, that's correct. Um, does this work with other drivers? Uh, it, there, I'm, I'm aware of some of, uh, some of some of the implementations which are part of Nova Docker today. Mm -hmm. So as long as they have a WIF driver to actually plug your WIF into whatever networking implementation is there, uh, that should work. Yes. Okay. I, I, that's, I've, not, I've not tried it out, but it should work. Theoretically, yes. Since you use Mike, I'll repeat the question. So the question is that uh, uh, you you have Nova Docker driver over here. It's, it's making a bind with call to some backend. So um, how do we actually create tab devices in Nova today in livered Nova driver and bind them to whatever backend is there? Let's take an example of uh, uh, let's say use OBS, right? Uh, so in OBS, you, if you go to livered, you have a word driver. Inside the word driver, you have this call, um, create port or bind OVS, right, yeah. port. So there is an implementation in there which actually made some system calls yeah. to actually bind it. Yeah, but that, that one makes actually RPC calls to the neutron server to bind them. Yes. So, so, here, how do we manage so it's, it's exactly the same way the way it works for okay. other implementations, exactly the same way. And exactly the same way it works for VMs okay. in livword driver, similarly in Nova Docker driver. Yes. I'm I'm not expert on LXD, so I'm, I can't comment. Uh, maybe we, I have some other folks who can uh, you can talk to. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. So in your sample, you create one uh, Docker container. Yes, that's correct. And you create multiple Docker container on the same Docker CPU. Absolutely. Yes. Why not? So uh, this from Nova, just like I mentioned, Nova um, has some APIs, and then Docker has some APIs, or Docker has some functionality. So there's an overlap over here in some functionality. In some cases, it's not there. In some cases, it's there. So create, delete, add an image, all those are, things are there. Um, but there are some implementation which is, uh, um, which is not exposed to Nova APIs, or which uh, Nova exposes or Docker does not. So there's a, there's a list of things on, I think, Nova Docker um, or, or Nova uh, Wiki page. You can go through that and see what maps to one-to-one -one and what is not supported, so they check marks and crosses over there. I think that, that will help. Does a similar overlap or a gap exist for the Neutron API as part of Magnum networking? So Magnum networking today is in a completely discussion phase. I just came out of the session, and that's something we're trying to solve. And we look forward to having more uh, feedback from other folks as well. And let's see where that goes. But the idea for that will be um, that architecturally it makes sense to have one common networking layer which does networking for everything. Yep. And that will be Neutron. Yeah, actually you might have just mentioned answered it, but you say you're not using lib network in this example. How will things change when, when that becomes um, uh, released for Docker. Right. So lib network is something which uh, Docker team has introduced, and this is an improvement onto whatever was there. Uh, the existing implementation was very primitive, and uh, they realized, and they came up with this framework, which to me seems very much like Neutron. That's outside OpenStack. Uh, one way could it be it becomes part of OpenStack, has a plugin, and that somehow it works or in some other shape and form it gets introduced, but that's completely not in OpenStack today. It's out of OpenStack, and there are a lot of other technologies outside of OpenStack which are using containers today. Uh, it might make sense over there. But it's very early stages. Uh, it has one experimental project called Docker Network, which allows you to create um, network topologies, and currently what we have over there is uh, a very basic um, L2 switch that you can create, that's all. And let's see how that goes. We got, yeah. Do you have any uh, comments on the security considerations for the Docker? Because that is uh, uh, mainly to be about 
I, I can I can comment on networking aspects of it, but uh, uh, containers it's everybody has a different opinion how they want to use them. So yeah, yeah. There, there are different ways uh, people have worked around those, and uh, it really depends on the use case how you wanna. So the question was that is there any security concern around Docker containers or containers in particular? So networking guy, I can. <laughs> Yes. It's it's uh, I I did not want to cover any specific implementation which is outside OpenStack, and I really want to talk about, talk about what's Neutron today, and what we can do today, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a completely different uh, talk in next summit, and we expect to have more developments in the Magnum community how we can handle because I see Magnum as becoming uh, the the main thing for managing containers. Thank you. Okay. I think yes. We're good. Thank you.